nitaingia nitaingia lango lake na sifa moyoni nitaingia kwa shangwe ku this is the Arosis Diaries and I'm a friend Joshua and this is my wife Francisca welcome to part 2 of how God spared my wife's uh, life and uh, the ordeal she went through and uh, she's here to give a testimony of God's goodness in our life and we are truly truly uh, humbled by the many prayers requests and the prayers uh, the visitations yeah. from friends All from over. even colleagues from work and many people who are involved to see that uh, she's safe and uh, she's uh, life again not continuing with her normal activities yeah so we stopped at um, a place where you're being taken to, to the theater. theater yeah for the uh, first surgery, for first guys. surgery. It's called laparoscopic surgery. Yeah. That means in a biological terms that they are going to operate without opening, you know, uh, the whole body. That means that they uh, take three holes, one here in the, near the abdomen umbilical cord, and the other one from the left side, and the, the other one from the right side. That's what's called laparoscopic surgery without opening or without, uh, you know, operating the whole uh, part, just finding and using like a, something like a micro camera yeah. to see what's happening in the fallopian open. tubes and then they can uh, do the surgery. So, so here mm -hmm. I am, I was rushed to theater, mm -hmm. yeah, so I saw my husband outside in the cold mm -hmm. with our son and I said bye bye guys, pray for me mm -hmm. and we hope all goes well and they come out uh, healthy and alive. Mm -hmm. So I went through the surgery and it was successful mm -hmm. and we really thank God for saving my life. Mm -hmm. And we came back home after one day mm. of the surgery and now here we are, we are at home. Uh, first day has been okay and then the second day guys, I started now developing complications. This is where things started getting bad now. Mm. I started vomiting so I thought it's, it's something like malaria or something. Just very early in the morning, I started uh, vomiting, throwing up, I couldn't now, I lost taste at all. Uh, uh, then I told my husband things are not okay, um, but let's just uh, take, give it some time and see how things go on. Then here again, second day, I'm still throwing up. I'm not eating anything, so I really thank God uh, for my husband. He was very, very supportive. You know, the way you were throwing up, you could, you can't walk to the bathroom to to pour the, you know, the waste that has come from your tummy. He was there for me, he could just go pour it and bring the best in for me and he could prepare for me whatever that I needed, most of the porridge, he could give me ginger, but all that immediately I could take, a, I, I could immediately I just vomit, you know. Nothing could stick in my tummy anymore. And I became so weak, very, very weak, and I became dehydrated. I could not even hold our baby anymore. I couldn't sleep well. Immediately, if I sleep on the right, I, I throw up. Then I, was, I wondered, what is happening? When I sleep on my right, I start vomiting, you know? My husband was there, speechless and very sad. But, yeah. We, we were strong and then when I became very, very weak, we decided to seek uh, for the second opinion again. We went back to the hospital, but a different, uh, different one. Um, and then they, they diagnosed me and then they discovered that I was very dehydrated because I couldn't take anything, uh, including water. Then they put me on the IV and 
I rested for some time, then again they told us, just go back home, continue with the medication, you'll be fine. But you know what, guys? I went to the hospital in great pain, then I came back even worse than I went there. But I kept telling myself, God help me. This is the Arosis Diaries and uh, you are watching us, our uh, real story, real story of what uh, happened to us and how God has been faithful to us. He saw us through a very difficult time and we are here to give testimonies of, of His goodness. Uh, the stories here are very personal and um, sometimes it gets emotional. Please uh, bear with us. We really went through hard times. Even I remember some point I developed, you know, high blood, uh, high blood uh, sugars, and I had also to take medication. I still am under medication, but this doesn't mean that um, uh, that this doesn't mean that uh, we don't trust God. We trust God, His word, chapter by chapter, word by word, letter by letter, dot by dot. We believe that in everything that we are going through, God was there, was there and is still here with us today. And actually, it's God who has given us this grace to have that strength even to share with you. I know some people may be worried that how comes you came out late because it takes real courage to tell your stories. Some stories can be told with tears. But the intention is not to weep emotions. The intention is just to strengthen somebody out there who might be going through a similar situation, to believe in God and to have faith that God will see them through. Remember the book of Matthew 19 to 6 says, for nothing is impossible to God. And also we will go back to the book of Jeremiah 29, 11, God, for I know the plans I have for you. you plans to prosper you but not, not to destruction yeah so god has good plans for us despite the challenges the yeah. question says that uh, nothing that god can give us that can overwhelm us he knows our strength mm -hmm. he knows that whatever we go through at some point and there to strengthen our relationship with him mm -hmm. so guys you're watching the arrow stories and uh, as my wife she's uh, sharing the story I was there by her side, I watched everything, I experienced everything. As a man, at some point, you you know, you cry inside. You don't put your tears out, but even if you're in pain, you have to be strong for your partner or your wife. Because if both of you are emotional, imagine it can lead to something else. So that's why, even if she was uh, that, having those difficult times, I was, you know, uh, experiencing them inwardly, but I had to be there, show that, you know, put that smile to just show her that uh, nothing is serious. But indeed, it was a really serious ordeal. Here we are, she's experiencing some pain after first surgery, a paroscopic surgery. I explained earlier on what's a paroscopic surgery. So she's here, and uh, I took some days off from work. And um, I told myself, because she was uh, becoming weak every day, let me take some days off locally so that I can attend to her. So on the day of uh, my reporting back to work, that morning, uh, she threw up and I felt something unique. And my instincts told me that when you are going to work, she is not that stable that you can leave her behind alone. You have to go take her with you because uh, coincidentally or by God's grace, I work at the hospital also. Also, although I work from admin department, but I work at the hospital and I know a few doctors there who are close friends to me. So I told myself, even before I told her, I told myself that please prepare and go with her to the workplace. Just explain to them whatever situation she is in, that you are not able to leave her back home so that uh, if there's a way, because there also we have doctors, although our hospital is a private hospital, they can be in a position to help her. And I, I, I must confess at this point that when things are 
getting worse of when things or when you are sailing on deep waters just know that that's when God really shows up God speaks to us through different mechanisms sometimes God uses our instincts when your instincts tells you this is wrong believe that this is wrong instincts are you know hidden vision like this something is going to happen even if you have not seen it so my instincts told me please go with her and I took that step I told her quickly prepare we are going to get I called my friend Darius and who was my best man Amos to come to come over he came to our place and I already he knew whatever we were going through but he didn't know that it was that serious I told him my brother you're here we must drove as fast as we can to the center where I'm working and let her get attended and uh, as God plans everything as we've said it from uh, Jeremiah 29 verse 11 God had already planned it imagine where I was uh, working before I was working in a, a company that's related to construction and maintenance and all sorts of things but God helped me to get fired from that company so that he can place me in an hospital where I can be a channel for my wife's uh, you know get to get help so as I start for that uh, hospital we normally have some discount like free consultations doctors and uh, even some medications we get discounts so here at the hospital we arrived there and uh, I must uh, credit to Dr. Uh, who attended to my wife uh, because I know for sure God used him even before he could examine anything he said a prayer for her the moment he saw my wife you know walking through the door to his uh, office he knew that something was definitely wrong with her and uh, he directed that uh, she get you know, x-ray uh, scans and also he did uh, they called it uh, ultrasound and he discovered that my wife had anya anya means that uh, the intestine had in uh, entangled as uh, somewhere this is a complication from the previous um, uh, surgery. surgery the laparoscopic laparoscopic <laughs> surgery yeah so we believe that when they were closing the wounds they did not do a proper job and uh, see this resulted that some hair or some gas entered yeah. and it made the intestine, intestine to like to interlock. interlock and also come intact you know the intestine are protected by a fluid line mm -hmm. a you know liquid but this time they went uh, you know the intestine had interlocked or entangled so the pain in, uh, so we came to realize even that the vomiting was due to that yeah, yeah. The, 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 the tummy was protruding, protruding yeah, it was be extending the tummy but she was remember she was not eating anything she was uh, barely drinking water and some yeah. you know concussion here and there but the uh, stomach was becoming bigger and bigger every day so that even made me worried every day so what i'm saying here we are at the hospital and uh, doctor my doctor now where i work looked at her conducted the test and discovered that she had an ear and uh, it's his recommendation that said that because he wrote an emergency report now to the general hospital where she had previously uh, gone through a surgery although on the women's uh, wing now he wrote to the general hospital emergency department that please this young lady she need correction of the procedure she's experiencing hernia hernia and she had what we call intestinal obstruction that means no fluid can come out of the intestine no fluid can enter all this throwing up all this vomiting was as a result of that the intestine were blocked so as we speak now the only option that that time we had against to russia the general hospital and we went to the hospital 
where well, I told my friend uh, Amos, who was with me, please save our life. Let's drive as fast as we can. And uh, we drove off. I sought some uh, hours uh, off from work. I helped her to the hospital. And uh, lucky enough, she was attended. And uh, as usual, you know, this is a government hospital. And they said, you know, men are not allowed in. So I left her there. I went back to report to work. So because I could wait for long. But I, I told her in case of anything, just give me a signal and I'll be back. Because as God plans things from the general hospital and from my private hospital where I work, it's very, you know, it's not uh, that far. It's very, you know, like a maximum of seven minutes drive. So that means that uh, in case of anything, I was also being there for her in any way. So we are at the reception before we continue. This is the Arosis Diaries and the stories being shared here are the real, raw stories of incidents that happened to my wife that almost cost her life. But God is faithful. She is here to tell the story. She is a living testimony that God is faithful and God never leaves his children. We are the hospital. Oh, well, after we go to the hospital, then the doctors attended to me, and then uh, they took me to the ward, whereby I was supposed to get admitted and go through the second surgery. And remember, the first surgery, it just uh, lasted for for six days, you know. Then they looked at the report from my husband's hospital and then they were like, well, who we'll gave you this report? We told them it's the doctor that examined me where my husband works. And then they, they immediately uh, again did the same thing that uh, the same like the uh, the same thing the previous the doctor the yeah before. yeah the X-ray and the ultrasound again they found out that I had hernia and I had also what we call uh, intestinal obstruction then they called the, the the you know the overall doctors the surgeons to discuss about it and see if they could try and compress uh, my fallopian tube so that that hernia could just you know uh, disappear without me going through an open surgery you know they tried their best unfortunately things could not work so the only option left was for me to go for the open surgery and so that they could save my life because I could not take even water anymore I felt like my tummy is now full and I cannot even tolerate anything, any drink, nothing was going through my my stomach. So the the thing that almost killed me was the tube that they inserted inside my nose through, to, to go through the mm -hmm. stomach. That thing really suffocated me. I cried helplessly and you know my husband has no more, he was told to I'll go outside and as they did the the thing and good thing my husband managed to to come and uh, he saw everything that was happening i was like unconscious you know i was crying helplessly asking the doctors to save me and to stop inserting that pipe you know because i felt like it's going it was going to take away my life then they said this is the only thing that you can do to save your life because the you know the the waste has to come it outside the yeah waste in the in the the styles that yeah. they needed to drain yes before they could conduct uh, the operation in the surgery yeah. so i went through the pain guys i cried so much and mm. i had to i had to persevere and uh, then I, I was taken for the it's called what's that? MRI. MRI. Mm -hmm. And uh, it CT still scan. shows, yeah, the CT scan. Mm -hmm. It still showed that I had that hernia. So at 3 a.m., they were taking me for the second operation, remember? 
the first operation was still very raw and I was still in pain. I had not healed, mm. but I had no option and they also didn't have an option. They wanted to save my life. So they took me in for the second operation. My goodness, that thing, it was terrible, you know, guys. I didn't know what was happening to me. My husband had come home. It was, you know, 3 a.m. And my husband had left the hospital at, 3 a, at 1 a.m. Oh, my God, I was all alone. I didn't know what was happening to me. So after the operation, I just Actually, spotted they, my husband. they called me mm -hmm. to come. But by the time I was uh, uh, coming, they already did the, they did the surgery. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because had, surely, uh, guys... We have a baby. I had to attend to him. Yeah. To take him to our friend's place. Yes. Daycare so that I could have the time to come and see you. Yeah. So all this was just balancing... You know, baby with the baby, baby work, work hospital, hospital, you know. So, but God's grace is sufficient. He's a strong guy, so, and I thank God for him. He really stood with me, and uh, that always uh, teaches me to be humble and to be respectful to, to him, and always uh, love him and uh, be there for him. and because he really did an amazing job that nobody could do what he did to me, you know. Mm -hmm. So after the surgery, I just, I was taken to the, you know, to the recovery room. Here they have what they call a recovery room. After you are taken to the, to the admission, you know. Then I woke up, my husband was there, it was uh, six. Around seven. Around seven, seven yeah. yeah. So I had pipes all over, you know, pipes here on my nose, mm. uh, pipes, uh, you know, it's the abdomen. Yes, yeah. the abdomen, pipes from this side to this. So I was wondering, what is this? Is this me? I was in great pain. I couldn't even talk to my husband. He just watched me and he felt very sad, but he had to. He prayed for me, he said a prayer for me, then he left for work. Then I was taken to the ward now, where I got admitted properly. Mm. <laughs> Actually, oh my goodness, this man you are seeing here, guys, is, is God sent. You know, he could wake up very early, come first thing to check on me, pray for me, wipe my face, because I could not do anything for myself. Mm. That's, that's why sometimes I break down because I was so helpless. But he was there for me, he did everything, he could brush my teeth, you know. Sometimes even my brother could visit me, but he could just be watching, you know. There's some things even your own sibling cannot do to you. Except your spouse, you know. This is the Arosis Diaries, mm -hmm. and we are happy and glad that you are watching yeah. our stories. Mm -hmm. This is part two of what happened with my wife, and yes. how God came through for her. Mm -hmm. And now we are celebrating God's goodness. Yes. And the grace of God is sufficient for all of us. Amen. We are watching to part three of this story. Yeah. And I hope at the end of it we come out with songs of praise. Yes. Our God has been Very faithful to us. To us yeah. This story is meant to encourage you, you and you and you, mm -hmm. whoever is going through a situation yes. that you are not Be alone. Encouraged. God is there with you. Yes. Tune into part two. Patri in a bit.